Hello students, I hope you are all well. So welcome to my channel Maths Hub by Dr. Tanya Bose. So today in this video, I'll talk about complex integration part 3. If you haven't watched part 1 and part 2, do watch them because they are the basic foundations for the methodology of complex integration. So before watching those videos, do watch them. I have put the links in the description box. So please watch them before you proceed to part 3. So what is there in part 3? Let us try to understand certain standard equations that we will be requiring in every question of complex integration, right? So the standard equation is, what does the equation mod z equal to 1 mean? So what is the meaning of this equation, right? Mod z equal to 1. So we know that when I introduced this topic of complex variables, we, I said that z is always equal to x plus iota y, right? So now what is the meaning of mod z? Mod z is under root of x squared plus y squared. So when I put mod z equal to 1, so that means I am writing mod under root of x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. And now when I squaring it up, I get x squared plus y squared is equal to 1, right? So this is what I get after squaring it up, right? So what is this representing? Isn't it representing the equation of a circle whose center is at the point origin and radius is equal to 1, right? So this is exactly what is the meaning of this equation mod z equal to 1. It is the equation of a circle with the center since the, there is no shift in x axis so the center is obviously origin and the radius is equal to 1 and we know that the standard equation of the circle is represented as x minus x naught squared plus y minus y naught squared is equal to r squared. So here that is why our center is z. Right? Okay. So this is what we understand by this equation. So center is at the point of origin and this radius is fixed as one unit, right? And this is the circle how we draw it on the two coordinate system, right? So now let us try to understand what is the meaning of this equation mod z minus 2 is equal to 1. So if I try to express this equation, let me put the value of z. So I will write z as x plus iota y minus 2 is equal to 1. So I can combine the real part. So on combining the real part, I will get x minus 2 plus iota y. And this is again in mod. This is equal to 1. So now when I open up the mod, I will get x minus 2 whole square plus y square is equal to 1. So now squaring it up, we will get x minus 2 whole square plus y square is equal to 1 square. So what is it again representing? It is again representing the equation of a circle whose center is at the point 2 comma 0 and the radius is equal to 1. Right? So if I draw this figure, the center is at 2 comma 0 and this radius, this radius is equal to 1. Right? So I hope you are able to understand. You were able to understand these equations, right? Okay. Let's take another equation. So now let's come out to a standard equation. Z minus Z naught mod is equal to rho. So according to the previous equations, whatever point we were having here, that was coming in the center. And whatever we were having on the right hand side of equality, that was representing the radius of the circle, right? So the same thing we are going to do. So Z0 will always represent the center of the circle and rho will always represent the radius of the circle. Right? So let us try to figure out certain questions over here now. So what will be this curve? Z minus 1 plus 3 iota equal to 2 represent. So again, we can replace Z as X plus iota Y. So when we replace Z as X plus iota Y, and then we have minus 1 plus 3 iota and we will put it equal to 2. So we can club the real part with the real part 
and the imaginary part with the imaginary part y plus 3 and this is within mod and when we remove the mod we will get an under root with real path square and imaginary path square and when we square it up we will get x minus 1 whole square plus y plus 3 whole square is equal to 2 square so that means we got the center as 1 comma minus 3 and we got the radius as 2 right if i want to represent it this is how it will be represented on the coordinate axis so the center is 1 comma minus 3 and the radius is equal to 2 units right okay so now let's try to figure out this mcq question you are given the contour in this figure so you can see that it's a circle whose center is 1 comma 0 and what is the radius then the radius is equal to 1 unit because the circle is touching the point 2 comma 0 so the radius is equal to 1 unit so out of the four options according to you which option is correct if i write first option z minus 1 modulus is equal to 2 that means 1 comma 0 is the center and 2 is the radius but is 2 the radius 2 is not the radius right so, A cannot be the correct option. Let's come to figure B, the second option, B option. Z plus 1 is equal to 2. So, here the center is minus 1 and the radius is 2. Again, this is not possible because center is 1 and radius is also equal to 1. Let's come to the C option. In C option, center is 1, radius is 1. So, this is correct. D is also wrong because center is not minus 1 and radius is also not 2. Right? So, here option C is correct. So, you might get questions. So, you, you should understand both ways when the, you know, equations are given, how to draw the figures and if the figures are given, how to interpret the uh, equations. Right? Okay. So, let's move on to the next definition before we move on to a very, very important theorem. So, the first definition is a simply connected domain. What is a simply connected domain? A connected domain D is simply connected if every simple closed curve inside D encloses only points of D. That means if you take any simple closed curve, suppose I take a simple closed curve here. This is my domain D. It's closed. And now suppose if I take a closed curve in this, any closed curve, right? So will this closed curve contains only points of D? Yes. That means whenever any simple closed curve is containing simply points of D, that domain is said to be simply connected. In nutshell, I can also say that suppose if this closed curve, if I shrink this closed curve, right? If I shrink it, if this closed curve shrinks to a single point, right, so then it is called a simply connected domain, right. There should be no empty spaces inside it. So if you shrink this closed curve, it will come to a single point. So that will be a simply connected domain. What is a multiply connected domain? It is just the opposite of it. A domain which is not simply connected will be called as a multiply connected domain, right? Now, have you all seen a donut, right? I'm sure you must have eaten a donut, right? How does a donut look? A donut or might be vada, right? So, you can see that it resembles in this shape, right? So, if you shrink th this curve, Will it shrink to a single point? No, it cannot shrink to a single point, right? Because it has some empty space in between. So, this is an example of a multiply connected domain. So, that means any curve which is having some hollow surface in it, that is a multiply connected domain. Now, depending on the count of the hollow surfaces, we call it as doubly connected if there is just one hollow surface 
If there are two hollow surfaces, it is called triply connected domain. If there are more than two hollow surfaces, then it is called a multiply connected domain. So a donut or preferably a vada, they are the very good examples of a doubly connected domain. Right? There is one hollow surface inside it. So I'm sure now you're able to differentiate between a simply connected domain and a multiply connected domain. Right? Okay. So now let us come to the very, very important theorem that is the Cauchy's theorem. So let us understand what is Cauchy's theorem. Cauchy's theorem says that if Fz is analytic in a simply connected domain D, then along the simple closed curve C in D, integration of Fz dz over the curve C is always equal to 0. So what are we trying to say here? That there is a simply connected domain D. So you can see that the red figure is the domain D. And we are taking the curve C within it. So you can see this C curve. So you can see that the C will always contain domain D is not having any hollow surface and it can always shrink to a single point, right? So D is a simply connected domain. So if your function f of z is analytic along this curve C, then integration over this curve C, the function integration, when you integrate this function, analytic function, it will be always equal to So it's a very, very famous result. Sometimes it is also known as the cauchy gorsuch theorem. So this is that the integral over this analytic function over this closed curve C is always equal to, right? So now let us try to question, see this question. Evaluate the integral of z upon z minus 2 tz over the curve C where C is the circle mod z equal to 1. Now, how to do these questions? Now, whenever you get a question over a circle, always try to see, is the function analytic over that circle? So, the first thing is you have to draw this figure, right? So, mod z equal to 1, I'm sure by now you will understand that it is a circle whose center is at the origin and the radius is equal to 1 units, right? So, your function is given to us as z upon z minus 2. Now, is this function analytic? Let's see. Now, for a function to be analytic, we should know that it should satisfy those two conditions, the necessary and sufficient conditions. That is, all the partial derivatives should be continuous. And secondly, it should satisfy the cauchy riemann equation. But before that, the function should be defined. There should be no singular point in this domain, right? In the circle C. You can see that the function is not defined at the point z equal to 2. What is happening at z equal to 2? The denominator is becoming 0. That means z is equal to 2 is a singular point, right? So the function is not defined here. If the function is not defined, it will not be analytic at this point. So what is the next step? The next step is check the singularity of the function. The singularity, where will it lie? Where will z equal to 2 lie? Is it lying within c or is it lying outside c? It is lying outside c. So according to Cauchy's theorem, he said that if your function is analytic within c, then the integral is always equal to 0. Our problematic point is at z equal to 2. And it is lying outside. So within this circle, see the function is analytic everywhere it is defined. So according to Cauchy's theorem, what is the answer to this integral? The answer of z upon z minus 2 dz will become equal to. Right? So I hope you understood this question. So I'm again repeating it. What we have to do? We have to consider the function. Check where is the singular point. If the singular point is outside the region, that means the function within that circle is always analytic. And if the function is analytic inside that circle, by Cauchy's theorem, the integral is always equal to. Right? 
So it's as simple as that. So let's try to do another question. We have to evaluate integration over C. 1 upon 2z minus 3dz where c is the circle mod z equal to 1. So it's the same circle mod z equal to 1 circle with center at origin and radius is equal to 1. So here what is my function? My function f of z is 1 upon 2z minus 3. Where is the singularity? The singularity is at the point where the denominator is becoming 0. So, the singularity is at the point z equal to 3 by 2. So, will 3 by 2 lie within C or outside C? You can clearly see that z equal to 3 by 2 will lie outside this circle. So, according to Cauchy's theorem, integration over C, f of z dz is always equal to 0. Hence, what is the answer to this integral? The answer is integration over c 1 upon 2z minus 3 dz is equal to c. Right? I hope you understood the question. Okay. Let's try to figure out another question. So you have to evaluate integration dz upon z plus 4 where c is the curve mod z equal to 2. So again, you draw the circle, so it's a circle whose center is at the origin and radius is equal to 2. What is your function? Your function f of z is 1 by z plus 4. So here, where is the singularity? The singularity is at the point minus 4. So where will minus 4 lie? Minus 4 will lie outside the circle. So if it is lying outside the circle, that means within the circle, the function is analytic and hence by Cauchy's theorem integration fz dz is always equal to c. What will this imply? This will imply integration over c 1 upon z plus 4 dz is equal to c. Right? Okay. So I hope Cauchy's theorem is clear to you. So if it is clear, do try these questions. And do let me know the answers in the comment box. I will surely reply to you and I'll let you know whether your answers are correct or they are wrong. Right? So do try these questions. Because exercise will make you perfect and it will make you give confidence also. Right? So thank you so much. So keep yourselves updated with my latest videos by subscribing into my channel MathsUp. So believe in yourself. And you will definitely do it. Thank you so much.